Well, good morning. Thank you all for coming out and uh, supporting us today. Uh, my name is Tim Stewart. I'm a team leader for the AISC, ASCE Student Steel Bridge Competition Team. Along with me today are team members Andrew Burkhardt, Andrew Dugan, Andrew Dapley, Matt Leighton, and Monice Moses. Um, the purpose of, or, I'm sorry, our faculty advisor is Professor Michael Mulhern. Our senior project coordinator is Professor Marcus, and our industry sponsors are uh, O'Rourke and Sons and Mall Learning Pulp Structural Engineering. The purpose of our project is to compete in the 2012 AISC ASCE Student Steel Bridge Competition. This intercollegiate competition is held each year, challenging civil engineering students to design, fabricate, and construct a scaled steel bridge <coughs> model. Students who participate in this competition have an opportunity to uh, gain practical experience in structural design, fabrication processes, construction planning, team, teamwork, and uh, yeah, uh, excuse me, project management. Uh, the rules of the competition simulate a request for a proposal which requires a one-tenth scale model to demonstrate the efficacy of the design. The de all designs are required to meet certain design standards regarding uh, strength, durability, constructability, functionality, usability, and safety. Our goal is to gain practical experience uh, in the civil engineering field by participating in this competition at the regional level at Lafayette College on April 28th and 29th, and to do well enough at that competition to advance and compete at the national level at Clemson University. Uh, the scope of work for our project covers four main phases. The first phase is the research and design phase. Uh, during this time, we had the opportunity to uh, learn about various types of bridges that we could use in our design. From that, we were able to come up with a few conceptual ideas. We narrowed that down to a preliminary design, and from that preliminary design, we made a few changes and came up with our final design. With our final design completed, we moved on to the fabrication phase, during which time we ourselves, along with some outside assistance, fabricated the bridge, and uh, I can tell you we worked really hard on trying to get it done and uh, completing it for today. Um, during that time, we continually tested and evaluated our design to make sure it met all the necessary standards and, and criteria set forth in the competition rules. We'll continue to test and evaluate our design as we move closer to the competition. And finally, our last stage is the report and competition phase, during which time we will report on our experience doing this project and compete at the regional level. I will now pass it off to Andrew Dugan, who will discuss more our research and design phase. Thank you, Tim. As Tim stated, the first phase of the project was research and design. For the research phase, we definitely had to look into the rules and requirements set forth by ASCE and AISC for the Steel Bridge competition. We needed to know what they were, uh, what the constraints were, so that we could come up with an effective design. We also looked at previous bridges for the competition, both Widener and other competing schools, and looked into their rules to see how they have changed through over the years. We also took into effect real life application, dealing with that our bridge contains a cantilever. We looked to see what bridges in the real world have a cantilever, and the Commodore Bridge right here in Chester is actually the largest uh, cantilever bridge in the United States. Here's are some general rules that we, ha we had to follow while designing our bridge. Um, the bridge total length had to be within 22 and a half feet to 23 and a half feet long with a five to six foot cantilever section. Um, you can read that they, there's some other requirements. Um, and also, the bridge had to be assembled in members. Um, each of the members has to fit within a three foot by six inch by four inch box. Um, and no more than two members can be connected by one bolt. Uh, for the competition, uh, we have to construct the bridge in a specified time of 45 minutes, um, no, using no more than six builders, but the goal is to narrow that, narrow that time down. Here are some conceptual designs that we took uh, from our research and our knowledge of how structures work. Um, the top portion are just some general drawings that we came up with. Um, 
just at the beginning of the project to base our design off of. On the bottom is a CAD drawing of the conceptual design that we chose to follow through with. I will now pass it on to Andrew Burkhardt for the preliminary design. Thank you, Andrew. Once we did go through all that research, we did finally come up with a, a preliminary design, as you can see up here. Uh, preliminary design consisted of two easy connections in order to connect it. First connection as shown right here is a keyhole connection. Basically, if you were to think about your door knob at home, it's a keyhole. You pick the key in, it fits nice and easily. When you turn it, it's what locks the mechanism and you can't pull it out. That's exactly how the top members work. What's great about them is they're really great in compression because they don't come apart. Now along with that, since these, these two members are one solid piece, we have our bottom connection, which is a puzzle piece connection. The way the puzzle piece connection works is basically cut out a slit on each side of it. This allows you to rotate the top piece for the keyhole and still have those bottom connections put into play. After coming up with our preliminary design and with our resources, we decided to come up with our final design and a much, much more simplified approach. As you can see here, we went with a modified Warren truss, even though that was our, our original design. One of the main things to realize here is there are no more vertical members. This is because when testing and actually looking at the bridge itself, the vertical members held zero to no load. So we were able to take them out to reduce the weight and to make it look a little bit more simplified. Also, we added more little uh, trusses on the inside of the bridge. This was to ensure that it would keep steady and it would be a stronger hold. The problem with last year's bridge is that it did not meet uh, the requirements for the horizontal testing, which means that it swayed too much in the X direction if you want to look at it that way. So we decided to come up with a final design for our actual lateral members in itself. That's right here. Because of the keyhole connection being too time consuming, we decided to come up with a very simplified approach. For the top members in compression and tension, and even down here as well, we were able to go with a basically tabbed connection. You weld two tabs on the inside, inside of our HSS, which is our seal, and you'd be able to slide them into the next piece, bolt a hole, uh, drill a hole through all of them, and just easily bolt it. This allows it to give some play when you need to line items up. Now your next question is, what about these diagonals? The one problem we have with the diagonals is, once you start constructing the bridge itself, it's a lot harder to fit them in. So we came up with our own design, and it might be a regular design we're not giving credit to, but we decided to come up with what we call a slap connection. Basically, this needs to freely rotate because this is going to have no give, neither will the top member. So what happens is it comes in, and as you can see, it slaps into place, and the hole is nice and, nice and tight right there. Now, to continue with our fabrication process, I will now pass it over to Matthew Lincoln. Thank you, Andrew. In previous years, O'Rourke and Sons Incorporated has been able to aid wider teams in the fabrication of their bridges. Due to the economic hardships they have faced in the previous years, they were not able to aid us in our fabrication this year. Our group took it upon ourselves, with the help of outside assistance, to fabricate our bridge <coughs> um, during our fabrication process, we needed to simplify our connections. The, ca the keyhole connection was too complicated to complete in the time frame we had and our resources. We simplified our connections to ensure that our fabrication was completed effectively and on time. <clears throat> our the biggest part of, of the competition is the construction time, at, as was mentioned before. Our bridge needs to be built on site within a 45 minute allotted time window. <coughs> Our new connections allow us to effectively and timely construct this bridge. In the, in the, few, in the next few weeks, we intend to uh, compete and practice our own construction time to ensure that we can com complete construction within this allotted time window. After completing our first members, we, we did a modified vertical load testing to ensure that they would withstand adequate loading for the competition. Upon completion of the bridge, we will complete a, fully, a full vert vertical load testing, which this vertical load testing includes a 1,500 pound load placed in the main span of our bridge, along with a 500 pound load placed on the cantilever section. After applying these loads, we will then measure the deflection, the total deflection of our bridge in both the main and cantilever sections to ensure that our deflections are within the allowable deflections set forth in competition standards. I will now pass it over to Andrew Dalfway to discuss our schedule and budget. Thank you, Matt. If I could direct your attention to the slide, you will see our schedule for uh, all of our events for the entire year. 
we began mobilization in September, after which we began our design or our, our research phase, in uh, which lasted until October. During which we were also in the middle of our design phase, which lasted until the middle of December. Uh, from there, after sending our shop drawings into our work steel, we began procuring the steel in January and then began fabricating it in February. Uh, after we are currently done fabrication, but as you can see from our testing phase, we are three quarters of the way through testing as we still have some modifications to make to the bridge and also we have to complete doing uh, complete load testings. Uh, we are also 50% through our evaluation uh, as we will not be finished evaluating the bridge until we have uh, participated in the competition. And we are 80% through our report phase uh, since we have not turned in our final report to our project coordinator yet. <coughs> our latest projected date for demobilization is May 28th as that is the date for the national bridge competition. Here you can see our budget, which consisted of a total of $7,200. $200 of that was donated by the School of Engineering for project supplies such as paint or other miscellaneous items. $6,500 of it was donated in kind by our work steel in the form of the materials and the steel that we needed to uh, fabricate our bridge. And $500 of it was donated by Mulhern and Culp for our uh, project <coughs> competition fees. Uh, so far, we only have $70 left from the School of Engineering budget. Uh, which we plan on using on other miscellaneous project items. I will now hand it over to Moniz. Thank you. <coughs> when involved in a design project like a still design, the Still Bridge design project, be prepared to make changes to your initial design. We've had to change our design several times. Due to the lack of resources available, we made significant adjustments to our project and to the final design of our project. If you are unsure of how to use tools or equipment that will require you to use during the fabrication process, research on how to use the, how to use the tools and the equipment to better familiarize yourself. Be sure to contact your sponsors in the beginning portion of the project because you never know what significant changes that could occur that could occur that will cause you to make a huge change in your final design project in the long run. We really highly recommend that the underclassmen get more involved because it will help better. Um, it will help give them a better expectation of what to expect and help them to become more aware of the work and the effort that that is involved in the construction and the fabrication of a steel bridge. We, in conclusion, we have designed and fabricated our steel bridge. We are currently still performing tests, and the tests that we've already begun performing have exceeded our expectations of the capability of the bridge. We, are, we have met our goals of practical expectations, and we will be competing in the 2012 AISC ASC <coughs> Regional Competition from April 28th to April 29th. And now I will pass it back to them. All right, once again, we are the AISC ASCE Student Steel Bridge Competition Team. Uh, we have designed, fabricated, and constructed a scaled steel bridge model, and we'll be competing in the upcoming regional competition on April 28th and 29th. Thank you for your time and attention. We would now like to open the floor to any questions. <laughs> was that we would <laughs> get I just the said you want to want to win the competition. Right, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well that's that's our main expectation. We haven't exceeded that yet, but um, I, our one one of our expectations was of course was getting it fabricated, getting it built. So we, we definitely exceeded that expectation with when we got it completed and, and built. Um, anybody else want to add to that? Uh, another thing that we wanted to add uh, which is one of our uh, ways to look at was every year they use a gusset plate. Now, a gusset plate, I'm not going to go into detail, but basically you have to require really cranking on a bolt and really getting it tight to how everything. We wanted nice, quick connections because it is a timed construction phase. So simple things like that, they don't need to be tightened. You can literally just slip the bolt through 
and just put the nut on the other side and it will still hold in place the same way. That was one of our expectations and with our design, as you can see, we met those expectations. Next question. Yes, sir. So originally you had a design that had vertical members in it and then you removed those. Was that uh, an analytical or a determination to have you remove those? That was an analytical process. We ran the design through a computer program called STED, which um, you can construct the bridge in the program and uh, add different load cases, like place a load in different spots, and it'll run an analysis for you of how much force goes through all members and all connections. And seeing in the uh, analysis of the, uh, through the program, the vertical members held minimal loading, and when we removed those members, it did not change the loading into the other <coughs> members too drastically. So we thought for an easier connection than uh, it was easier for us to remove it than having to design another connection for our vertical <coughs> members to attach to. Have you done any testing to date that gives you a sense of whether you're going to be able to meet your vertical and horizontal deflection criteria? Well, well we did do uh, one load <laughs> test on our, uh, on our connections. Um, that we roughly estimated conservatively was about 1,100 pounds, and that's just on two connections alone. And it's 1,500 pounds over the entire main span and 500 on a cantilever. So from that, we feel pretty confident about how our bridge will, have, will hold up. But again, we, we still have further tests to do for the load test on the whole bridge. Well, we still have time for any more questions? You sir? Uh, what were some of the modifications that were made uh, following the tests? Um, well, for one, it was uh, we, made, we, we changed the orientation of the tabs. We had them horizontal, but we mainly uh, put them vertical now, so they're kind of getting pressed down a lot more. Um, we also changed with stake we use in the welding. Uh, we talked to uh, some more experienced welders, and they told us that we should change uh, the type of stick that we're using to weld for a better, stronger hole in the structural steel. Uh, that was one of the modifications. Uh, again, with the vertical members, after testing, that was it. We saw that you know, we put a, a vertical member in there, and it, it, it didn't move. It didn't even compress at, at all. So. Right there was a, a good sign to just take it off uh, for that. <coughs> when you considered your structural members, the sizing of them, and considering your gross weight that you would expect, what factor of safety did you design to? <laughs> uh, when we designed it, uh, we ran it through STAD. STAD program actually has a, a, a place where you can add in a factor of safety depending on the deflection and how much load. Uh, I think we went with like 3.5 as a factor of safety. Uh, granted, we went with such a high factor of safety because we're not the most experienced with working with steel and, and welding, so we figured if we went with a high enough factor of safety, uh, if anything were to slip or anything were to go wrong, we would be able to make that adjustment and still have a factor of safety of at least two um, uh, for, for the STAD program in that way. Are there any others? Thank you very much, guys.